In a previous video, we spoke about the US Army's woke policies and its impact on low recruitment. But such problems are found throughout the Western world for similar reasons. The Canadian Armed Forces are getting about half the applicants they need to meet their 2022 recruitment objectives. And that's despite the fact that the Canadian Armed Forces plastered chiquitas all over their recruitment website. In France, in 2019, 31% of recruits cancelled their contract during the probation period. Of course, a third of them drop out. Most 18-year-olds today spend their time in their mom's basement, eating Cheetos, drowning in Mountain Dew, breaking their wrist playing video games, scrolling TikTok dances, and on Abela Danger. I'm sure a bunch of them quit when they learned that Uber Eats doesn't deliver to the trenches. Oops, I got carried away. Meanwhile, the British military simply stated that they would reduce by 20% their recruitment goals. That way, they could announce good news and that 98% of positions were filled. In Spain, the military faces an overall lack of 20,000 soldiers. Same thing in Italy as for Germany at the end of 2020. 18% of positions above junior rank across the Bundeswehr were vacant. Added to the fact that the Bundeswehr's ground forces were already reduced by 50% since 2010. Now to fill this gap, Germany is hesitating between enlisting young teenagers hmm, or enlisting foreigners. Hmm. And this topic of recruiting foreigners is being brought up more and more even in the United States. Oh my god, this gives me some massive late Roman Empire flashbacks. So as of now, to increase military recruitment, we have the choice between A. Get woke B. Enlist barely legal teenagers C. Hire foreigners and D. Reduce the size of the military. Now honestly, how do we solve this problem? And one of the best examples is World War II. Oh, I'm presenting you today's sponsor, Enlisted. Enlisted is a World War II multiplayer shooter. It's fully cross-platform, so you can play with all your girlfriends. Whether they use PC, Xbox Series S and X, PlayStation 5 as well as PS4 and Xbox One, lead your squad of soldiers in large-scale combat, with hundreds of players fighting on the most famous battlefields of World War II. Aside from exceptional engineering tools, Enlisted has more than 100 weapon models for you to discover. Rifles, machine guns, mines, grenades, flamethrowers, rocket launchers and many others. Choose your own setup for your squad and soldiers, according to the game style that you prefer. You can pilot an aircraft and dominate the sky over the Pacific or the beaches of Normandy. But my personal favorite is to use a panther tank and make Soviet tanks cry during the Battle of Berlin. Play for free and use the link in the description. Once you have registered, you will get a free bonus. Three days of premium time and several orders for troops and weapons. The link is in the description and I will see you in front of my panther. Allowing older recruits. I think the solution for the military is to have one fitness test to rule them all. Remove all the fitness standards and criteria for male and female. That's sexist, okay? If we keep making more and more of these gender-neutral washrooms... Alright then, let's have gender-neutral fitness tests. We'll be amazed at the final result. But what I say is that we should also remove the age bearer. For me, anyone that passes the fitness, medical and psychological test should be welcomed meaning we should open up the military to older recruits. Now, I know you'll tell me older people have less endurance, but honestly, that's a generalization. So many guys in their 20s are unfit that it would not surprise me that middle-aged men could top them. It all depends on one person's lifestyle choices. If physical fitness was the only standard, why is the average age of special forces operators between 30 and 44? What they lose in physical abilities, they gain in experience and maturity. The current war that I shall not name has shown us how many unfit, middle-aged men, even grandpas, are fully capable of serving and defending their nation. And we have countless examples. We have Ukrainian Senta, the tank driver. Here we have a Ukrainian crew of a PZH-2000 that seems to have munched on too many potato dumplings. Take a look at these Ukrainian soldiers on the Bakhmut front. Do you see how many of them have grayish stubbles on their faces? Look at these men from the 105th Territorial Defense Battalion. They age like fine wine and handle their weapons just like anyone else. Or here, what about these Kharkiv scouts? Three of them were professional rugby players in their youth. 
well, these guys probably can squat or bench press their body weight or complete 20 pull-ups or run 5 kilometers under 15 minutes. But does that make them bad soldiers? Because they can stay 3 days in the foxhole, under enemy shelling, in the rain, with freezing water up their thighs, eating cold food and not flinch. Ruslan is from Chigirin, a city in Ukraine's Cherkasy region, known for its rich Cossack past. He always keeps an amulet to protect his life. My mum gave this to me on the front line. Ruslan's fighting spirit is supported not only by his mother, but also by his son Anton, who has been deployed to Donbass as well. They are in the same area, but carry out different roles. Same thing on the Russian side. Father and son in the ranks of the Russian armed forces, the son was awarded a medal and tells about his feat of arms. What about these volunteers from Donetsk? Once again, father and son fighting side by side. One an entrepreneur and the other a student. And they both took up arms. Meanwhile, the French army still puts the age limit at 30 years old. The French make it clear that they prefer younger recruits mainly because of higher fitness capabilities. 90% of the forces are 25 or less. Yet, they still agree that for some specialized jobs, older personnel are welcomed. Other countries have also started recognizing the potential of older recruits. Here we have a combat veteran, Staff Sergeant Monte Gold. He re-enlisted in the military and completed basic training at age 59. Why not? He even said the fitness tests were easier than he expected. Why? Because he still practices jiu-jitsu and rocks 50 pounds for 7 miles each week, meaning he's still physically active. Of course, age took its toll, but Gold hoped to be able to serve as a mentor and role model to the younger trainees in his training cycle. Going through the training with the younger people, there was a burden on me as well to perform the best I could to be an example to everyone there. People were really curious about why I was there and would tell me openly that it was really motivational and inspiring to have me there with them. If this 59-year-old old guy can do this, I can certainly do this. And here we have Dr. Dory Gelbert. He joined the army at 60 years old as a dermatologist, but he still had to go through basic training. He said at first he couldn't even do 15 sit-ups. All his body parts were burning, and it wasn't necessarily because of age, because with practice, he managed to go up to 65 sit-ups and 80 push-ups and even run 2 miles in 16 minutes. I'm sure this is better than most of what your friends can achieve. And now on the home turf, Dave Morrison. At 53 years old, he decided to join the Canadian Armed Forces as a private. He had all sorts of jobs in his life. One day he received a notice on LinkedIn asking if he'd ever consider a career as an air combat systems officer in the Canadian Forces. And he said, sure, why not? Most of the kids were much younger than half my age early 20s um, and a lot of the kids uh, would come to me and ask for advice or ask how to sew a label on their socks or iron their shirts or if they needed a band-aid or if they had pink eye I had all the goodies to uh, to help them out although these are men in their 50s extreme examples I find it highly interesting a lot of vacant positions could be filled up with guys like them. And we know how US military recruiters have a hard time getting access to high schools and college campuses. So why not catch them right after? In their mid-20s or early 30s, take a look at the average age of Russian mobilized personnel. 35! And they seem to be doing just fine. Let's talk about the fact that Russia raised the age of conscription from 18 to 21. And the maximum age went from 27 to 30. And I was so curious to find out why did they do this? Retired Russian colonel Anatoly Matvichuk noted that infantilism in modern guys passes later than in previous generations. In fact, adolescence now ends not at 18 but at 21. And this is all because of the modern lifestyle. Now it's not negative, I'm not saying we have to go back to eating liver. It's just the way it is. If the Russians think that adolescence ends at 21, do you see how crazy it is now to allow 17 year olds into the armed forces? And I'm wondering, could there be a correlation between the age of a soldier and PTSD? For example, the French Foreign Legion puts the cutoff at 39 and a half, but they explicitly say that the average legionnaire they're looking for is 23 years old 
with prior military experience and overall quite mature for their age. AKA, they don't want kids. Think about it, these days, higher education is a lot more attainable. Now, a lot of young people after graduating high school have to decide whether to join the military or continue their studies. Go to college, university. Basically, the choice between a drill sergeant God damn it, come. and college girls. Have some fun. All right. Now, jokes aside, we should also consider a way for students to be able to go through some sort of military course if they want to. For example, by joining the reserve. Or like when this father followed his son's footsteps and enlisted in the Canadian Army Reserves. So I joined not just to, to be a member, just to, to be proud of wearing a uniform. I really want to be proud of my actions, what I'm doing. It's like a call, something like what I need to, I should do. Russian Colonel Matvichuk believes that at 21, it allows young men to work and go to university, become disciplined, gain some technical knowledge and specialized skills, which then improves the quality of their draft contingent. We can all agree that guys in their early 20s will remain the core of the armed forces. But there's an interesting historic parallel. The entry age for the Roman army was 18 to 22. Now the lifespan of a Roman man was 60 years. So they entered the military roughly a third into their life. Using the same measure, if the average life expectancy of a man is 80 years, a third of that would be 26 to 27 years old. It can really change the way we think about military enlistment. If you get a chance, remember to support the channel by using the link in the description to download Enlisted for free and earn exclusive rewards. And remember, against buildings, use HE shells. Against infantry, HE shells or your MG34 and AP rounds for tanks. And let's be honest, being a soldier nowadays is not only about being an infantryman. There are hundreds of specialties where your age is more or less important. Until what age can you be an air defense specialist? A crew member for HIMARS battery. Ask yourself, would your dad or your uncle, would they be able to be a good crew member of an artillery battery? The military constantly needs truck drivers. Why waste their time training a bunch of 18 year olds that will ram the trucks into the first ditch when they can recruit men with 20 years of experience that probably can do the job better? And these guys can even serve as a role model for the younger ones and help the overall training process. And fun fact, in America, the average age of truck drivers is between 44 and 46. Why can't a construction worker be a good fit for the army? They wake up early, they're used to difficult working conditions, hot, cold, rain, snow. They're used to lift heavy things on a daily basis. And you know what? The average age of construction workers in the US is 41. These guys would be perfect as combat engineers. You know what? Divorced men is an untapped pool of recruitment for the military. Okay, let's think about it. These guys lost their homes, their jobs, their friends. They're looking for purpose, a way to rebuild themselves. The military could even tell them, look, we'll give you a better lawyer so you can get to see your kids. I mean, it's pretty tragic. But perhaps by allowing older recruits to sign up, it could fill up this 20 to 25% lack of personnel, especially considering the fact that Western countries face a demographic disaster. Low birth rates mean that there will be less and less young men able to take up arms every passing year. So before something is done about it, who will defend the country? The armed forces have to be at 100%. You go to war with the army you currently have, not the one you wish you had. And Western countries might not be ready. Now understand there's a whole set of problems that come with this idea. Physical limitations. Let me know in the comment section if you come up with any other, but there's something I read online that was interesting. The guy said, as a young O1, I had a terrible time asking this older recruit to do things. It was like telling my dad to take the trash out or make sure the washroom was clean before heading out. In the end, I just let him do his thing for the 30 days we had him. But I think there is always a workaround. Even though we're family, we still keep this distance in work. We still, we still keep it professional. So since I'm higher rank than him, he, I get some leadership positions sometimes on top of him so he has to follow my my orders and uh, that's that's interesting because at home i'm the one who follows his orders and over here he's the one who follows what i tell him to do but despite all the problems we can think of i think as of now the benefits outweigh the disadvantages. That's all I have for you today. Let me know in the comment section what you thought of my analysis. If you're new to the channel, make sure to like and subscribe. And if you want to support my work, make sure to check out my Patreon and PayPal.